Welcome to the NWSSC Service Point training video on how to transact an ROI. The ROI, Release of Information, is used to document the client's consent to share their information in Service Point. It's important to remember the ROI is transacted before starting your data entry. We call the process of inputting an ROI and transaction in a way that's quite similar to how a cashier would transact a purchase. Following a series of steps, the process must be completed to the very end before your ROI is in place. We will show you what to look for to know the ROI has been transacted successfully. Before that, let's go over the process step by step. We know the ROI comes before the data entry, but as a good practice, it's helpful to look over the details of your ROI before doing anything in Service Point. If your agency uses a paper ROI, take a moment to review the signature the date, etc., and confirm that everything is in place. Have you received client consent? Was the ROI accepted or declined? What type of documentation is it? Has a client record already been created? Searching first can save you time and reduce duplicates. And lastly, are you working with a household? If so, does the ROI apply to multiple people? By knowing the answers to these questions ahead of time, you can reduce mistakes and the need to backtrack. Why is the ROI so important? It's because it affects the way data is shared. The people we assist have the right to determine if their information will be shared. The ROI is the mechanism that controls the flow of data based on the client's consent. If you'd like to follow along and practice in the training site, please pause the video now. After you log in, open or create a client record. Unpause when ready to continue. To start the ROI transaction in ServicePoint, go to the ROI tab and click Add Release of Information. We recommend a top-down approach to cover all the questions. We will cover the process in these seven steps. Household members, provider, release granted, start and end date, documentation, witness, and of course save at the end to complete your transaction. Let's dive in. Step one, who to include in the ROI. Make sure you select the people included in the ROI. The client record that is currently displayed will be automatically selected with a grayed out checkbox. If you are entering an ROI for a household, you may need to wait a few seconds for the household members to load at the top. Always start with the head of households record. Select who to include from the household bucket by checking the box next to their name. There is an easy check all shortcut next to the household type. Keep in mind that each adult must provide their own consent, whether it is an individual signature or personal verbal consent, depending on your agency's practice. For a household with children, a parent or guardian can consent for their child. Step two. Select your providers. Select your provider or often multiple providers. Pay close attention to this step and pick your providers carefully. The ROI defaults to your login provider or your current EDA provider. If the field has been cleared, clicking My Provider will show you which provider it is. Depending on the number of providers you have access to, you will either see a drop down menu or a search button. The drop-down menu only allows you to select one provider at a time. The search button, shown here, has the option to select multiple providers in one ROI transaction. The ROI is required for all levels where data is entered. Let's go over the three providers you should know. Your login provider, the entry provider, and if applicable, maybe your parent provider. What do these mean? Your login provider is the initial provider that displays in the header on the upper left when you log in. You should be very familiar with the agency or provider name. Every ROI has at least the login provider. If your workflow includes adding an entry for your client, your ROI will also need to include that entry provider. 
The last type only applies to a few agencies that have a different parent provider than their login provider. If you're not sure, feel free to check in with your supervisor or local administrator. Why is this important? The ROI is like a switch that controls the outward flow of data. The ROI providers are where the data is being shared from. To illustrate, if a TV or computer is plugged into an outlet and the master switch is turned off, can the appliances turn on? The answer is no, because there's no electricity flowing. An ROI where the client has said, yes, you can share my data, allows us to turn on that switch so the data can flow where it's authorized to go. Adding multiple providers is the same process as adding a single provider through the provider search. Please note, some providers may not be set to allow you to select multiple providers. We recommend you contact your agency admin or local administrator if you have questions. There are multiple ways to search for a provider, by name or keyword or by provider ID. If you're searching for the same providers all the time, the provider ID method will be the fastest. After you find the provider you want, click the green circle with the plus sign to add to the list below. You can see the default login provider is already there. The red circle with the minus sign is how you remove a provider from your list. When you have all the providers for your ROI, click exit to go back to the ROI screen. Step three, release granted. Did the client say yes or no to the ROI? Do we have consent to turn the switch on? Answer this question according to what your documentation says. If the person responded with, no, I don't want to share my data, it is very useful to record that too. Recording a denied ROI provides confirmation that consent was requested and the client said no. In the case of a denied ROI, one transaction at the login provider will suffice. After you've answered the release granted question accordingly, the next step is step four, your ROI dates. Okay, step four, ROI start date and end date. The start date is always the date that the consent was approved or denied. For example, if your agency collects paper ROIs, input the date the client signed the form. Then there is the end date. This is the date the consent expires, which can vary based on your ROI. Be sure to know how long your ROI covers so you can enter the correct end date. A declined ROI also requires an end date. Step five and six, documentation and the witness field. Step five and six gathers more information about the ROI. Select the type of documentation and complete the witness field based on your workflow. The witness field may be used as such, a place for a witness to be recorded, or in other workflows, it may be used to indicate which client consent form was signed. Follow your workflow to fill in the witness field and click save. Yay, you have completed your ROI. Nice job. You should see something similar to this after you click Save. Notice how there are now three individual ROIs for each of the providers entered. You may have a different number depending on how many providers in your ROI. If applicable to your ROI, you'll find it's much easier to add multiple providers to one ROI transaction instead of doing each one individually. The completed ROI also displays the client's permission, a yes or no, and the ROI dates. On the far right, there's a little binder clip icon where you can upload file attachments. After an ROI is transacted, the ROI status in the client's record will update. When no ROI is present, you will see release of information none. However, after the ROI is transacted, you will see it change to the end date. Green if consent was approved, and red for denied. It's important to note that the user's view of the ROI status may differ depending on where a user logs in and whether an ROI is in place for that specific provider. Since we transacted an ROI for the login, entry, and parent provider, 
If a user EDAs to a different provider besides the one transacted, the view will change. Congratulations, you've covered all the steps to transact an ROI. Here are some final notes to leave you with. Review the details of the ROI before you start. Take a look at the dates, who is covered, and was release granted. ROIs vary in scope and duration. Pay special attention to the end date. And if it applies, creating an ROI for multiple providers at once will save time and effort. As a final reminder, the three potential selections are your login provider, entry provider, and if applicable, your parent provider. Feel free to copy the summary of the seven steps in the green box for a quick reference. The ROI is a key step to make sure we only share data when we have the client's consent to do so. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this training informative and feel ready to transact your ROIs. If you have any questions, please contact your local administrator for more information.